The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 26th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, you can send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Mixed bag out there. We take a look at the indices. Dow's off 43. S&P's off 21. NASDAQ 100 is down 158, while the Russell's up 1%. 16-point move there. Semi's up 3 tenths of a cent. That's a 10-point move. Trendies are down 6 tenths or 90 points. You've got gold off 4 bucks. Silver down 15 pennies. Light street crude off a buck 57, printed out at 83.81. Natural gas up 3 cents. 30-year treasury bond of 20 ticks, printed out at 109.01. The leader in the clubhouse to the upside is O'Reilly Automotive. $41 move, nearly 5%. Service now just behind at 32 bucks. The upside, 15% there. Morningstar is up 32 bucks. I'm sorry, Service Now was up 6% in the 32 point move. Equinix up 26 bucks, 4%. Linux uh, International is up 6.5% or 22 bucks. Those are the movers. Shakers to the downside. Align Technology looks like it's out of line, down 25%, a $61 move. West Pharmaceutical Services up 35 bucks or 10%. Belmont Industries down 13 bucks, 30%. MasterCard down 19, 5% there. Eli Lilly off 3% or 17 bucks. So we got movers and we've got shakers. But let's begin the day by Take a look what's going on inside the equity future complex out here. Let's do this. Let's go over and take a look at where do we want to start? Let's start here. Let's start. Let's start over here. Let me change screens. Give me a moment. Um, give me a second here. Sorry about that. A little hiccup. But we're going to be there. Okay, so we're going to start off on this screen here, which is going to show us the daily equity future contracts out here. So the ES mini in the upper left-hand corner. What you'll see, it's triggered Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. It already confirmed that pattern on October 24th. But the key here is it did not close above that red oscillator and change line. So there was no confirmed signal that that bottom was really going to take hold. So... What we're waiting for now, today is going to become bar number eight of a TD9 count. Bar number nine tomorrow just simply is going to need a close below 42.41.75. So to a certain extent, it's saying that if there is a rally for that pattern to confirm, you're not going to get substantial, significant movement out there. But if you're looking for a TD9 count bottom, that's what we'll need to do tomorrow is close below the close of bar number five. If we saw a bullish reversal candle today, that would generate a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom and it would also confirm an A to B equals CD to the downside out there. And if we want to go ahead and take a look at it, we are in wave number seven. That is letter G. Now that needs a higher low. So the ES, the ES Mini, S&P 500, the ES Mini is signaling to you and I that it's attempting. You don't see the chart? What the heck? Don't know how you don't see the chart, Peter. Um, anybody else? Uh, should be, should be there posted. Should be live out there. But uh, keep giving me some information if for some reason it's not out there. So uh, so that's what's going on in the ES Mini. It's definitely giving us a signal 
Okay, perfect. That it is attempting, that it has all the signals out there. I say signals. It has all the, it has all the patterns. We're just waiting for confirmation. And then, of course, what we're also waiting for is, in fact, a close above that red oscillator and change line. Now, we take a look at the NQ. The NQ yesterday negated its TD9 count bottom. It is now completing at least the one-to-one. -one. It's a little bit beyond the one-to-one, -one, A to B equals CD pattern. So that says if we get a bullish reversal candle, that's going to confirm a buy the D point pattern. Today will become bar number eight of a TD9 count. It simply needs a close tomorrow in order to confirm a TD9 count, a close below 14.712. No other patterns out here in the NQ for us to pay attention to. Inside the Dow, the Dow formed an actual buy the D point pattern on the October 6th uh, candle session. That created a four river morning star pattern. But if price did close the day below 33021, that pattern would get negated. So that's still an effect out there. There's a Roachman indicator signal that's been triggered. That needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom out there. No wave seven. That was negated this morning when price closed below or ticked below at least the October 23rd low out there. So a couple different potential bottoming patterns inside of the Dow. Well, one that's already existing. So price has to close below that level that I gave to you to negate that signal. The Russell 2000 is a strong dog out there. Now we take a look at it. Yesterday was the completion of a TD9 count bottom. If price closed below yesterday's low, so let's take a look at that. Yesterday's low, i got to move this over to the side. Yesterday's low is 1657.80. If price closed below that, that definitely tells us about a further move lower. Now, the key level here is 1686 at the moment. And 1686 is its red oscillator and change line. If price can close above that, this TD9 count bottom will, in fact, take hold. Now, if it takes hold, it still has battles up above. And up above because that's where the profile levels are. If it is only a counter trend move inside the Russell 2000, we won't know that. First, in order to even consider a counter trend move, we've got to see a close above that red oscillator and change line, 1686 as we speak right now. But 1731 to 1741 would be where a counter trend move would fail. If price were to close above 1741, then be back to where price had broken down from at 1800.90. So that's what we have going on. We take a look at the daily time frame charts for the equity future contracts. I'm going to just close that out because I can open it back up later, but just to free up some resources. Let's go from there and let's go take a look at the U.S. indices out here. We'll come back to currency pairs, but let's go take a look at the U.S. indices and see what kind of signals we have here. In the upper left-hand corner, we're going to start with the uh, Dow. Now, the Dow formed a, a buy the D point pattern. It had that same Four River Morning Star pattern. So its key level of support is down at 32,846.94. It does have a Rosemont indicator signal triggered. A bullish reversal candle would confirm another bottom. In the case of the S&P 500, just like the ES Mini, today will become bar number eight. It's also in wave number seven. That is letter G out there. So that needs a higher low. The Rosemont indicator signal that's also present needs a bullish reversal candle. So the S&P 500, just like the ES Mini, is signaling to you and I, it's certainly prepared to make a bottom. We take a look at the NDX 100. The NDX 100, bar number eight, wave number seven, I believe. Yeah, wave number seven, that is letter G. Uh, no roads, meant to indicator signals. This requires a bullish reversal candle or just simply a TD9 count bottom. And that just simply is going to need a close tomorrow below 1460485. We come back to this break, we'll finish looking at the equity the cash indices. We'll look at the um, seasonal patterns. When are we expected to find a bottom? Or are we? We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Dow's down 131, S&P off 29, NASDAQ 101, 183. Russell's still up about 1% or 15 points. In fact, that's where we were kind of uh, left off with regard to the Russell 2000. So it completed a TD9 count bottom yesterday. A bullish reversal candle today would confirm a uh, Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. The key level inside the Russell on the cash indice is about 1677.50. That's currently what the oscillator and change on is printing at. A close above that would suggest at least a two-day rally, perhaps more. If we take a look at the semiconductors out here, the semi Semiconductor index is different than the SMH. In fact, I'll show you. If you take a look at the semiconductor index right now, you, can, you will complete a TD9 count bottom today. That should take price up to its oscillator and change line at 33.22. If I take a look at the SMHs, we'll put this over here right now, you'll see there's no TD9 count pattern. I mean, it is going to form bar number eight today. So really what you want to do is the semiconductor index itself is preparing to form a bottom. I don't have that same signal inside the SMHs. I would rely on the semiconductor index itself versus the SMHs for the signals. If we take a look at the transports, today we'll go ahead and complete a TD9 count bottom pattern. That says today's low is something you should jot down on a pad of paper. Price close below that tomorrow or in the next few days. That tells you about a strong momentum move to the downside. NASDAQ composite, like the NDX 100, also in bar number eight of a TD9 count. And with regard to the New York Stock Exchange, a bullish reversal candle today would confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. It is in wave number seven. That is letter G. So we got a lot of G's out there. And those can now those require a higher low. So the earliest that that pattern could confirm is tomorrow. But folks, the real key area out here with regard to resistance, that price must close above in order to signal that there is at least some kind of bottom attempt out there is getting above those red oscillator and change lines. Otherwise, that's the price target on a counter trend move out there. And that's the importance of that tool. Now. Where do we go from here? Let's go from here. Now, I'm, I'm concerned if I put this next tool up on this screen right here that uh, it's going to shut it down for some reason. So we're going to switch over to a different screen, and then we're going to take a look at the seasonal patterns. We're going to try to understand seasonally where are we at. So we'll change the screens here. If you give me a moment, we'll get back to the main screen out there. And now we'll put up the seasonal patterns. So when we take a look at the seasonal patterns out here, this is the S&P 500. This is for 95 years. The red vertical line out here is the where we're at today. 
Yeah, where we're at today. What's that tell us? That says that we're supposed to see on a seasonal basis, again, just true, flat-out seasonal basis, that the S&P 500 is supposed to make a bottom right about now. Well, geez, we just went over all those charts in the ES Mini inside the S&P and the cash indices, and they're certainly giving you and I that signal. Now, that's 95 years. What we can also do is we can go and take a look at the same 95-year period of time, and we can switch it to only take a look at pre-election years. Turns out that for pre-election years, we're supposed to be forming a bottom today. Now, that bottom is only supposed to last basically until maybe the very early part of November, kind of like a window dressing period, and then price resumes its way to the downside. So from a seasonal standpoint, at least for the last 95 years, um, uh, and how do I change this now? For the last 95 years, we're basically at a point in time, regardless of whether we take a look at the pre-election cycle or we just take a look at it straight out, we should be bottoming right around now. It doesn't guarantee we're going to get a bottom. If we take a look at the S&P 500 and just look at the last 25 years, well, guess what? We're supposed to find a bottom right around now as well. Let's take a look at, instead of 25 years, let's look at 15 years' worth of data. 15 years says the same thing. We should, should be finding a bottom about now. And if we take a look at the 10-year time frame, we've got that same message. So there's a lot of reason for you and I to be taking a look at the indices out here and say, you know what, we may just get, we should, we may get a buyable bottom, or we may at least get a tradable bottom that should last for at least two to three days. Maybe it takes us into the early part of November. What else is out there that assists us with that idea? Well, let's go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, and we take a look at the advanced decline uh, with the uh, McClellan oscillator, advanced decline oscillator out there. That's going to be panel number three. What you're going to see is I drew in a rising green line when we have that making higher lows and price we take a look at the new york stock exchange the upper panel making lower lows that's an indication of a divergence that is preparing us for a bottom remember inside that new york stock exchange chart it also had a roads momentum indicator signal bullish reversal candle potential td9 counts although i believe that today was bar number seven of that let's go back and take a look at it but all of this is really lining up for what should happen. Now, what it could have, could have, what it should have, we'll find out soon enough out there. Um, if we take a look at, we had the perigee lunar phase come in last night at like 2252 or 2253 or something right along those lines. That's another line of demar demarcation for us to pay attention to. Uh, that line out there is be 4181.50 inside of the ES Mini, inside the NQ. That price point is 14.3, And that says that if we can start seeing price close above that level and then take out resistance areas, you're watching this on Tiger TV, you're going see that we have and we're looking at just the upper two panels we have resistance areas at the descending trend lines and we have resistance areas at the top of the profiles if price is able to clear those levels that tells us that what we were just looking at is likely to come to fruition which is at least a at least a tradable bottom out there is there anything else that you and i can look at to assist us and i would have to say hmm not really out there. Now, we do know that there is an influencing factor of the U.S. dollar index. We know the U.S. dollar index has more of an impact on metals than it does on the equity futures out there, but it's still something to pay attention to. So why don't we go take a look at it? When I first start off with taking a look at it, we take a look at the daily U.S. dollar index chart out here. And what we can see is price right now is trading above the top of its daily profile. That's printed at 106.42, and there's the U.S. dollar index is around 106.57. I do have a 10-minute delay on this data feed out here. Closing above 106.42, I know that for two consecutive sessions would indicate that price is likely to make a run for its roads momentum indicator top at 107.05. Also, closing inside that swing point, in order to do that, you need a close day above 106.51 would be another indication that that is likely to happen. However, we can't just look at the U.S. dollar index and think that that's all we need to do to figure out what is going on. Instead, we need to take a look at what's, in the underlying, what's going on on the underlying instruments, the instruments that actually make up the U.S. dollar index. What are they doing? Here, we take a look at the euro US dollar. You can see it's got a TD9 count bottom. And right now, price is trying, as it has done for the last several days out here, it is trying once again to close above that green oscillator and change line. Well, if the euro is going to move higher, there's one thing I can guarantee you it'll put pressure to the downside on the US dollar index. 
it's 57 percent. It's a lot of pressure that it would put to the downside. So the level to be watching today, not so much the U.S. dollar index charts, it's really watching the euro. Oh, shoot. Wait a minute here. It wasn't at the right spot. Gosh, darn it. Thank you. Sorry about that. Blah, 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 blah. All right. So now back to the euro US dollar. We're back to where it's supposed to be. And what we can see here, still the same scenario, TD9 count bottom and price testing a key level of support. And that is that oscillator and change line. Now that's printing right now at 1.05308. If price can hold that level, it offers the opportunity for price to make a move to its TD9 count breakdown area, which we know is strong resistance. That's at 106.73. So if this level of support holds, still the same thing. And it moves higher from here, it'll put pressure to the downside inside the US dollar index. We get back to this break, we'll finish taking a look at the currency pairs. We do have some questions that have come in, so I want to get to those as well. And uh, we'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. So if we take a look at the euro, just back at the euro, you can see that since October 5th, uh, price has pulled back several times and tested and rejected that red oscillator and change line. That's how significant a level of support that is. Just like we were taking a look at this, so it should hold. It has held in the past. It should move higher, at least up to that 106 level. And if it does that, that's going to put some weakness inside the U.S. dollar index. However, if we get a close below that red oscillator and change line, that's a whole different story out there. And that's what makes that level so important to be able to watch today, 1.05303 as we speak right now. A close below that takes us back towards that TD9 count bottom, and that'll put strength inside the U.S. dollar index. And strength inside the U.S. dollar index is coming from the yen, a 13.6% of the weighting. And a close today above 150.16 will negate its roads momentum indicator top. A close tomorrow above 150.16 when they get its weekly TD9 count top. In this case here, if the yen is moving higher, it's getting weaker and will put strength inside the U.S. dollar index. The Great British Pound has found support at its oscillator and change line, very much like the euro. That's been tested and it's been rejected several times. That's currently printed at 1.21 year zero. If price closes below that, well, that says we're headed lower. That'll go ahead and put strength inside the U.S. dollar index. So, Right now, the yen kind of dealing with the resistance level, so not sure which way that's going to go. But the euro and the pound are suggesting that the U.S. dollar index should pull back out there. So I hope that that helps everybody out. Let me go ahead and close those charts. And let's guys start getting to some of the requests out here. I don't want to get it behind on uh, those. And the first one that we're going to look at is going to be for Alton. And he's in a Palantir and is just looking for some ideas as to what this is doing or where it's headed to. So let's go take a PLTR as a ticker symbol out there. Let me get this full thing set up so I can look at it on my other screens as well. And Palantir is... Um, So what is it? So you're long. So you're you're below support. You're below profile support. You're below oscillator and change line support on a daily basis. And quite frankly, you need a much of you need a big spike lower in order to trigger a TD nine count bottom. That spike lower and that would have to be today. And we need to spike below fifteen twenty one. If it did that, then we would get a TD nine count bottom. Short of that, we don't have a TD. We got a TD nine count, but it's not doesn't qualify as the bottom pattern that I'm looking for. So therefore, if you don't get that spike down below that level we just looked at, this is likely to continue to head lower. Now, price is trading into a swing point. The swing point was from October 23rd, 55 million shares. Yesterday, you got into it with 46 million shares. Today, so far, we are at 21 million shares. Oh, boy. So you're moving into that swing point with volume, or it appears you are, at least for the first two hours of trading. That says that at least price would get down if you close inside that swing point with volume. That increases the odds that that low would be tested at 1521. Tested may be broken. If I look at the weekly time frame chart, it's just a consolid price is consolidating with inside its weekly profile. So price could be targeting 1423 Alton. And on a monthly time frame, the level of support out here is 1502. That's a new profile that formed last month or a couple months ago out there. So um, I'd watch the daily. Watch the daily. But at least you should get a retest of that swing point out here. Not that that's a bottom or anything, but you should get a retest of that October 23rd swing low. And again, that number was down at the 1521 level. So, Alton, um, I don't have great news for being long Palantir at this stage, but maybe you're in at much lower prices. Um, and at this stage here, it looks like it wants to continue to move lower. Let's go take a look at Microsoft. This is for S&P inside the Tiger's Den. We take a look at Microsoft. What do we see? So Microsoft has pulled back and it has tested its oscillator and change line. That's at 330.57. Now, let me see where we're actually trading. T. We're at 331.22. So as long as that holds S&P, 330.57, and preferably uh, the level that you want to see hold is the top of its daily profile, and that would be at 331.39. So you'd like to see it close above that. If you do get that, then we're likely to see Microsoft complete its A to B equals C to the upside out there. I, uh, I don't have that, uh, that drawn in here, but that's the pattern that is in play out there. Now, what happens if price closes below 330.56? Then... And this could still be a counter trend move out there. Could be. The problem with me calling that is I have this two bar rule. And so if it closes below the top of that profile, we only have one bar above the top of that profile. But ordinarily, a counter trend move would find support in the zone of 329.15 
to 331.39 out there with 329.15 being the real key level. But right now, as of 11.35, you've got a bullish message with price at least testing and so far holding that key support area. And that's the important chart. Now, on an intraday basis, the 30-minute chart, is there anything to assist us? There's really not. It's got an A to B equals CD to the downside. Needs a bullish reversal candle. Has gotten back to close the gap that it formed out here from a couple of days ago, but it's still inside that uh, candle from uh, the 4 p.m. close on October 24th. So this would say that you need to see a bullish reversal candle on a 30-minute basis to confirm a buy the D point pattern. So hope that helps you out, S&P. I know that uh, Muck inside the Tigers then wanted to take a look at Microsoft as well. Uh, let's go take a look at our next request, which is coming from Jambala. Now, I don't know if it was your request or not, but Jambalaya was uh, mentioning NVIDIA. So on a monthly basis, and uh, Jambalaya, I don't know if this is what you saw, but it's got a TD9 count uh, top out here. It's got a Roach Mintum indicator top. And NVIDIA likely pulling back to test 380.04 or so. That's its green oscillator and change line. Weekly chart, Roach Mintum indicator signal. If price closes below the bottom of its weekly profile tomorrow, that's 408.99. Odds favor a further move lower. If we look at the daily time frame out here, the daily time frame formed a sell the D point pattern. Now you could actually be getting a sell a, uh, a to B equals CD to the downside. How would that unfold? Well, the swing point that it needs to close below is from October 23rd. The volume there was 47 million shares, NVDA. Uh, today so far, in the first two hours of trading, you're at 23 million shares. This has volume. So it looks like if you get a close below that swing point, don't know if you will or not, but if you do get a close below that swing point, that's from October 23rd, that low, 409.45, you'll have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, where could that take us to? For that, I'll go take a look at my other charts. Let's do this here. Let's go ahead and switch over to the black background charts. Give me a moment here. And then we'll just simply expand out the daily time frame so that that's all we're looking at. We'll get rid of the A to B equals CD pattern. Uh, we'll get rid of that. Uh, now we'll leave that trend line in here. So let's go draw in the new A to B equals CD pattern out here. Oh, I, I see there's actually a larger one. So, there, boy, there's a number of them possible. But now that we got this chart open, what? Uh, let me pull this back just a tad further as well. So Microsoft is trading back into what is an area of support that was generated October, August the 14th out there. So the volume there was 69 million shares. So you're pulling back with similar type, potential similar type volume today. So here's here's the large rate of B equals CD. So let's take a look at that. That is really a swing point from September 21st, 45 million shares out there. So let's draw that one in. We'll draw in a number of them because there are a number of them. Uh, so the A point, that's going to remain at the high of August 24th. The B point on this one is the low of September 21st. And then the C point is uh, October the 12th. So one to one, we get you down to 383. 23 out there that's the first one there was the second one that i was looking at on my smaller version of the screen out here and there's your a point which is at the c point here's your b point it's at the october 23rd low a two-day retracement that was 41 percent. that one gets you down to 370. so you got to watch today's volume and i would say that you also want to watch the price point of 40311 you close below that we're likely headed lower in n video we'll be right back You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go take a look at natural gas for Ron inside the Tigers. And his question is long or short. My re my response or answer would be long from a trading at not not from an investment standpoint. Uh, I don't think that uh, we've made the bottom yet out here, but we could have. Uh, but right now, what you've got is price trading above the top of its resistance, the top of its daily profile. That's where I thought. And yesterday, price stopped right there. It was both the oscillator and change line and the top of its profile. Now, the day's not over, and price may get back below 338. And if it does, it just tells you that, man, this thing likes to consolidate, uh, certainly between profile levels out there. But if price can close above that, it offers the hope of at least rallying into the high here from October 18th. That high is at 352, 354. If price can close above that, then you're looking to move to 369. Now, the issue here with regard to long or short, what I was looking at is kind of like what I call a junior swing point out there. And so far, price is test and rejected. That's the bar from October 18th. So that makes it a little bit tricky. But by day's end, you might have your answer. And I'll still go with the close above 338 should get us up to at least test the top of that swing point, maybe higher. Now, on a 30-minute basis, Ron, this formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. Did that as we were coming into the 1130 time frame. But price has also found support at this stage at 338. That's the bottom of its profile out there. So what we might see here is we might see natural gas continue its rally from this point forward out there. I don't have any other charts out here to suggest something different. Now, if we saw a close below 338, different, uh, different scenario. But right now, it looks to me like what natural gas has done, it's pulled back, it's tested the level of support, and it should trade higher from here, Ron. So I think from a trading standpoint, it's uh, long at this stage here. I'm kind of out of um, not so sure about the longer term. I think the longer term with regard to the way natural gas is, has been trading doesn't come in until January or February of next year. So hope that that helped you out with regard to natural gas. And thank you for the request. Let's go to our next request out here. This is coming in from Not a Trader. And Not a Trader wants to take a look at ticker symbol GIS. So let's get uh, that pulled up here. Give me a moment. We'll get to those charts. Uh, am I on the right page? Yeah, okay. Just need to get to the right thing. 
So GIS should be right, tucked in right here. And this is General Mills, GIS, and that is trading. It looks like it wants to trade to. So now to trade, I don't recall what your question was or if you had a question, but here's what I can share with you. And that is that yesterday you had a big close above the top of its daily profile, and you're trading above that. You're trading above yesterday's high. What General Mills wants to do is make a move up to its breakdown resistance level. It's a very devilish number. It's 66, 66 out there. The weekly chart is looking promising because right now price is trading above its oscillator and change line. And that suggests that what we could see out here is a move up to 67.29. So you got 66.66, you've got 67.29 as your resistance areas. On a monthly time frame, this formed a road momentum indicator top. Price has pulled back to test its breakout level support at 59.90. That supports the idea of a bottom and at least a further move higher out here. Is it a significant uh, bottom i would say a price close above 67.29 the answer to that question would be yes so if you're it is it's definitely on a buy as we speak right now just don't know how it's going to deal with that resistance zone which we'll call between 66.66 and 67.29 so i uh, hope that helps you out not a trader but a good pick with regard to uh, general mills out there charts look pretty darn good let's go take a look at apple uh that's for uh, muck in uh in uh, Italy, I, I, or maybe you're not in Italy. I'm not sure where you're at uh, today. But uh, let's go take a look at this for Mike as well as for Nancy. And we take a look at Apple. What do we know about it? Well, one, we know that today is going to become bar number eight of a TD nine count pattern. We also know that it's in wave number seven. That's letter G. That needs a higher low out there. Uh, there is an A to B equals C to the downside that could or should take Apple towards the 163-ish area out there. And that would then say if we get a bullish reversal candle, you would have a Gartley buy pattern. So the buy patterns that are in play out here for Apple, today will become bar number eight. It says that you could get a bottom between today and Monday. Wave number seven, you get a higher low, that says that you would have a bottom. Price then, if you get those signals, should take us up to its oscillator and change line, 172 and change. Right now it's 172.78. On a weekly chart out here, the swing point for the A to B equals CD had volume of 261 million shares. When we closed below that, it was a 285 million shares. And that was back on the trading week of September 29th. So Apple does have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside on its weekly time frame. Let's go figure out where that could take us to. Let's just simply see if we can do the cut, paste, and assemble part of Stevie's techniques out here. There we go. So we got the cut, paste, and assemble. So the one-to-one -one gets us, that's still the same one-to-one -one that we're looking at on a daily time frame. So it's around the 163 type area. On a monthly time frame for Apple, Apple is starting to get back in trade in, oh, no, I'm sorry. There's a new profile that is formed for Apple. That profile, let me give it to you, it's going to be at the bottom is 147.01. So that certainly is game out there. And the resistance zone, because it's bearish in structure, is between 186.85 and 198.23. But let's take a look at apples in bar number eight. So when an instrument gets into a potential bottoming signal, if it is going to form a bottom, we ought to see some intraday signals that help us out. When I look at a 30-minute time frame chart, we don't have such a pattern. We do. I do see an A to B equals CD to the downside. Uh, actually, there's several out here that you could put in. Um, but you'd still need either way, no matter how we would uh, paint this, you still need a bullish reversal candle to identify some type of a bottom out here. So we don't have the signal necessarily in a 30-minute time frame chart to suggest that a bottom is in. What if we switch to a 15-minute time frame chart, Stevie? Well, if we look at the 15-minute, still nothing there to assist us with a bottom that I see quickly. Let's look at a 10-minute chart out there. And on a 10-minute chart, you could get a road momentum indicator bottom. Um, I don't have the right oscillator and change line up there, but we can say the resistance is at 168.94, 168.24 and 168.94. That's Apple for its 10-minute uh, time frame out there. So there's a potential for a bottom. We're just not yet seeing it in the cards just yet out there, but it is worth monitoring for sure. So Nancy and uh, Mike, I hope that helps you out with regard to Apple. Phil wanted to take a look at MasterCard. MA is a ticker symbol there. Let's pull those charts up. We take a look at MasterCard. We can see that, ooh, this thing is a gap to the downside, bar number seven today, below weekly profiles, inside the monthly profile. So the next price projection level, I would have to say would be 339.93. That's the center of its monthly profile out there. Now there's an A to B equals CD to the downside. That uh, B point had volume of 11.7 million shares, was passed last week with 12.4. So there's your confirmation of an A to B equals CD to down. So let's go ahead and draw that in 
Again, a price projection looks to me like we're already at the one to one level. So now what you'd be looking for, you're probably at the one to one point two seven two level in MasterCard on a weekly basis, is you would be looking for a bullish reversal candle. We can say the same thing about the uh, daily time frame, but when you make A to B equals C D patterns out here, you don't make them with wide ranging bars. And that's what we have this morning out here. So this is suggesting to you and I lower price. As far as where's the next support area out here, that would be down at three forty six thirty one when we take a look at the daily time frame. So MasterCard is not looking good at all we take a look at the daily the weekly and the monthly time frame charts out there so phil i hope that that helps you out and provide you with the information that you were looking for as well we get back to this breakout here we're going to go ahead and take a look at xbi and that is for greg m steve rhodes with tf and ed we'll be right now Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back 
right, folks, we're taking the biotech ETF for the S&P 500 XBI. We can see that it already has a TD9 count bottom on its daily time frame. Bullish reversal candle today would generate a Rosemont indicator bottom, although that's actually been confirmed. So you just get another confirmation. The key here is we've got those bottoms. But what price was unable to do out here, uh, this is for Greg, is was unable to close above its red oscillator and change line. And quite frankly, that's where price is pretty much sitting right now. I realize we're trading at 66.54. You need to see a close above 60. 6630 today. If you get that, Greg, you're likely to get a move up to 66 of 6843 or 7029. Those are your two next battleground areas. And above that, it would be 7296 out there. So uh, on a weekly basis, you'd love to see a bullish reversal candle. It doesn't look like you can get that today. That would confirm a buy the D point pattern out here. But right now, on a monthly basis, price is trading back into a prior swing point. That swing had volume of 291, 291 million. You're trading into it with about 194 as we speak right now. So don't know what it's going to look like at the end of the month out there. That's XBI. To finish out the show today, let's go take a look at Juniper Networks for Dan. Dan, Juniper Networks has got a what? If we get a bullish reversal candle today, this will go ahead and confirm a Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom. Now, you do have a battle. It's at 2539 and 2571. Those are the center and top of its daily profile. Um, but you get a close about 25.17, price will go ahead and should want to take on those battleground areas. On a weekly time frame chart, it needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a weekly by the D point pattern. And the monthly chart, price is taken on a swing point from back in October of 2022. So one year later, volume there was 81 million shares. So far, this has done 62 million shares. You got a daily TD9 count bottom. Looks like it might take effect. You may also get a TD9, uh, a, uh, I'm sorry, a Roach Mentum Indicator bottom today. Folks, thanks so much for joining me. Stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll see you tomorrow on Fantastic Friday. Take care, folks.